Hey guys and welcome to a new video. This is Miles from Swiss Crypto Podcast. As the end of the year is getting closer and closer, every single crypto YouTube account, YouTube channel is doing price predictions for 2019. So guess what I'm gonna do? You got them right. 100% not a price prediction. Today I'm gonna talk about the tulip mania and if there's a connection to the crypto market that we've seen in the last one and a half year. So stay tuned and let's get into it. Before we start, quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor and whatever I say should not be taken as any legal tax or financial advice. Please always do your own research before you invest into anything. In the recent months, we've heard from several different directions that the crypto markets show similarities to the tulip mania. We've had different news sites writing about this stuff. CNBC saying Bitcoin bubble dwarfs tulip mania from 400 years ago. Elliott Wave analyst says we've had ZY Crypto saying why Bitcoin is linked to the Dutch tulip mania, etc. Uh, a lot of thought going on. A lot of very strange articles, in my opinion, they are all linked below if you're interested in, eating, in reading up on them. But the most important question here should be, what is the tulip mania and what does it potentially have to do with the cryptocurrency space? So the tulip mania is considered to be the first well-documented speculation bubble. Um, it has taken place in the 17th century and lasting from 1630 to 1637. Uh, for the ones that are just listening, here I have a chart of how that looked like. Um, if you're interested, have a look at the screen. Uh, tulips lost about 95% of their value when the bubble popped after four months of continuous growth in value. And the Dutch people back then were just very, very much into tulips. Uh, everyone was trying to get their hands on tulips. They sold a lot of their stuff to buy a tulip. Uh, there are sources that state that people bought tulips for the price of a house back then. Uh, if that's true, I'm not sure about that one. Don't take my word on that. But the main message is here, um, people were mad for tulips, prices of tulips rose enormously in a period of four months until nobody wanted to buy any tulips anymore and the price headed directly to the bottom and tulips lost 95% of their value. In the past few centuries, scientists repeatedly tried to make sense of that tulip mania why there was such a run for tulips and how this bubble in the end popped what led to the bubble popping and there's a very interesting theory about how bubbles could be formed that i want to bring you a little bit closer um, on the screen you'll see a venn diagram on the one side it says doing something dumb on the other side hoping someone else is dumber and in the middle we have the greater fool theory. And the greater fool theory states that the price of an object is determined by not its intrinsic value, but rather by expectations of market participants that are under the belief that another party is willing to pay an even higher price for the asset as they already did. So they are in continuous search of if you want to say so, a greater fool that pays a higher price for the asset. If you want to apply this to the tulip mania back then in the 17th century, you can find some quite interesting similarities, isn't it? Because the intrinsic value of tulips, at least in my understanding, is to buy a tulip, to plant it somewhere in your garden, and you have a beautiful tulip after that. And that's it. That's the intrinsic value of tulips to me. And when it comes to the tulip mania and that bubble popping there, I could imagine that the greater fool theory could apply 
to that tulip mania. Now, does that greater fool theory also apply to the cryptocurrency space? Uh, the problem is that we don't yet know the real intrinsic value of crypto, in my opinion. Uh, that will be determined in the upcoming years when adoption is to come. As I already said, I, in my opinion, my personal view, I only see one intrinsic value in tulips. Um, but in my side, crypto offers a lot of different use cases and intrinsic values. It is a currency. Um, it can simplify transactions. You can use smart contracts that work off of blockchain. You can store information on it. And it's also solving privacy issues, etc., etc. And what I want to show you guys here is that the intrinsic value of crypto is not just one thing, that it can be used as a digital currency. It's not only that. So what I want to tell you guys with this is that we can't yet determine the intrinsic value of crypto and blockchain in general. And there has to be a lot of development in the next few years until we can determine that intrinsic value. Um, I'm not saying greater fool theory can't be applied to the cryptocurrency space at all. I'm pretty sure there was a little bit of that in the 2017 bull market, but I don't believe that you can draw a parallel to the tulip mania back then because tulips are for one thing planting in your garden and that's it. That's just my opinion. Um, if you believe else, please state it down below. I'm really interested in counter arguments to this one. Um, what I want to cross to in this podcast is if we really saw a bubble pop uh, after the 2017 bull run. And Elementus.io did a very interesting Bitcoin price chart comparison with the Nasdaq chart. They compared it to the chart back during the dot-com bubble. As you can see on the screen, if you're looking at it, if you are just listening, they just took the BTC graph and the Nasdaq graph, uh, laid it over each other to see if there are any similarities. And though the time scale is not the same, Bitcoin rose much, much faster. Nasdaq took years to rise that high. Uh, the patterns still look quite similar. And if we look at the digits, we can see that Nasdaq lost about 78% of its value back then when the bubble popped. Uh, last year, Bitcoin lost about, well, there are different sources, about 80 to 87% of its value. Uh, also quite similar. So we can actually see some similarities to another bubble that really popped. And as I already told you, I think the greater fool theory played also a big role in the 2017 bull run when retail investors were just left waiting for institutional investors coming to the crypto space. And that, in my opinion, was the main reason that we've seen such a bad year, such a long bear market this year in 2018, because that's exactly been the case through the whole year of 2018 that we've been left waiting for institutional investors. I believe a lot of retail investors were expecting institutional investors to come into the cryptocurrency space at the end of 2017. Um, I don't believe that most people didn't expect a retracement after that big bull run, but I also don't think that the retracement or the bubble popping would have been that big if institutional investors came into the market at the end of 2018. I think we would have seen a healthy retracement, not a very big one, but still, let's say, back from 20,000 for a Bitcoin back to 10,000 and stay there, something like that, then institutional investors coming into the space and then it's slowly going up again. But that's just my opinion, my understanding of the market, how it could have worked out. Um, my medium educated guess is this whole thing 
was really kind of a bubble caused by the hope for fast money and the letdown of retail investors by institutional investors. But guys, just keep your heads up. Um, markets always move in cycles. This has been quite a bad year for the cryptocurrency space, not only for the cryptocurrency space, also for the NASDAQ and other markets. Keep your head up. This has been only a very short time in the cryptocurrency space. There's a lot to come in the future and there will be adoption coming. There are institutional investors coming into the cryptocurrency space with BACT and SIX, etc. Uh, so don't give up hope. Uh, I hope I could give you an interesting view on the Tulip Mania, its connections or potential connections to the cryptocurrency space and how the crypto, let's say, bubble looked like in comparison to the dot-com bubble back then. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments about the topics that I stated, please state them down below. I'm very interested in your opinion. Subscribe to the channel, that will mean a lot to me. And I'll see you in the next video.